सो यू हैव ए प्लेटफॉर्म एंड यू वॉन्ट टू मेक ए मूविंग प्लेटफॉर्म दैट द प्लेयर कैन वॉक ऑन जम्प ऑन एंड ऑल्सो जम्प थ्रू इट दिस इज गेम एक स्टेशन एंड लेट सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम आई क्रिएटेड ए न्यू ऑब्जेक्ट एज माई मूविंग प्लेटफॉर्म कॉल्ड ओ प्लेटफॉर्म मूविंग आई प्लेस इट इन द रूम एंड स्केल इट डाउन सो इट स्मॉलर If you're wondering how I'm scaling it, I'm using Game Maker's new nine slice feature, and you can check out my stream on it here. To make this platform move, we're going to place two points in the room for its starting and ending position. I've created a new object for that as well, called O Platform Point. I'll make this invisible, as it shouldn't be visible in the game. In its variable definitions window, I've added two variables. This is the ID of the platform that this point belongs to. It's an expression and the default value is no one, which means no instance. Then this is a boolean that stores whether this is the starting point or not. If this is disabled, then that means it's the ending point for the platform. Now in the room, you'll need to double click on your moving platforms and give them unique names. So for me, this will be platform 1 and this will be platform 2. Now I'll place a point here. I'll open its variables and set the platform ID to platform one. Starting point will be true. Then I'll copy this instance and place it here. I'll open the variables and set this as the ending point. So this is now where this platform will move. Now I'll place points for the second platform as well. For these, I'll set the platform ID to platform two. and you can also change the color of your ending point so you can easily differentiate between the starting and the ending points now we need to assign the positions of the points to the moving platform i'll go into the o platform point object and add the create event in this event i'll add this if this is the starting point it will create two variables in the platform instance star x and star y these will be set to the x and y position of the point Then we have an else block and this will run if this is the ending point in that case it will create variables called and x and and y so this way the platform will know where it starts and where it ends let's actually move the platform now i'll open the moving platform object and here add the create event in this event i'll add this here we are just creating some variables this is the default speed of the platform and this is its current speed It's a separate variable because we'll keep changing this value. Then we have the move x and move y, which store how much the platform is moving in the current frame. I'll add two more variables now. This tells if the platform is going towards the starting position. If it's false, which it is by default, it means the platform is moving towards the ending point. Then this is the amount of frames it waits before it starts moving again. So in my case it's going to wait a second after it reaches a point. Now I'll add the begin step event and here we'll tell the platform where it's moving. I'll add this here. Here we are creating local variables for the target position where this platform needs to move. By default they are set to the ending coordinates. However, if the platform is going to the start, then they are set to the starting coordinates. Then here we are calculating the sign of the difference between the target and the current position then multiplying that with the current speed and applying that to the move x and move y variables the sign function basically gives you 1 if the value is positive minus 1 if it's negative otherwise just zero now i'll add the end step event where the platform will actually be moved it won't be moved in the step event so that's when the player can use the movement values of the platform to move itself before the platform moves now in this event i'll add this here we are simply adding the move x and move y variables to the x and y of the instance so that it moves then in this condition we are checking if the platform has reached the starting position we are checking if the platform is going to the start And if the distance between the current position and the starting position is less than the current speed, which means the points are close. In that case, we set going to start to false, set the current speed to zero so the platform stops, and then set the alarm zero to wait time. This alarm is what will make the platform move again. Then here we have a similar condition which checks if we are not going to the start, which means the platform is going to the end. 
and then it checks if the platform is close to the ending points. In that case, it sets going to start to true, stops the platform, and calls alarm zero. Now we're gonna add the alarm zero event, and in this event, we'll simply set the current speed to the platform speed so that it starts moving again. All of this will make the platform move based on the points that we placed around it. Now we need to allow the player to jump on it and move with it. I'll go into my player object and open the step event. This is where the player handles collisions. So before this code, I'll add this. Here I'm using instance place to check whether there's a moving platform below the player. And if there is, it will return its ID. To check for the platform, I'm adding this to the Y position where the maximum value is selected from either 1 or move Y. This means that if the Y speed of the player is greater than 1, then that will be used. Otherwise, it will use 1. This makes sure that we use the player's falling speed to check for a moving platform below it. But if it's not falling, then it should just check 1 pixel below it. By the way, in my code, I'm using the variable names move X and move Y. But in your code, they may be HSP and VSP or something else. These are basically the movement speeds of the instance for the current step. Then we have a condition checking if a platform was found and whether the player is above that platform. We do that by checking if the player's bottom edge is less than or equal to the platform's top edge. This makes sure that the collision only happens if the player is above that platform and in all the other cases, there won't be a collision. This allows the player to jump through that platform without colliding with it. Now if all of this is true, here we run some code for pixel perfect collisions. This only runs if move y is greater than 0, meaning that the player is falling down. In that case, it runs a while loop which moves the player down pixel by pixel until it finds a collision. Then it stops the player's y movement. This is basically the same stuff that I am doing in my regular collision code. After that, we are simply taking the move x and move y of the platform and adding them to the x and y position of the player. This will make the player move with the platform. If you run the game now, you will be able to ride the platforms and it will all work perfectly. Now, depending on your code, you may or may not be able to jump from these platforms. In my case, I was checking for a collision with the regular platform only to allow the player to jump. So I also had to add a collision check with the moving platform so the player could also jump from it. To make this easier, you can also just create a parent object for the regular platform and the moving platform and check collisions with that. Now you should be able to freely move and jump on these platforms and also jump from one moving platform to another. Now this does apply the movement directly to the instance without any other collision checks. But the most important thing is that the player now knows the velocity of the platform that is standing on. How you use this velocity with your movement and collision system is up to you. One simple solution is to create local variables for the final move speed, which are initially set to move x and move y. Then we add the platform's velocity to those variables. And in any subsequent collision and movement code, we just use those final movement variables. This way the added velocity of the platform will make it into your collision system. So that's all for this video. Check out my other tutorials from here and make sure to subscribe for more game maker content. I'll see you in the next video.